here on Boss Talk 101. Uh. Yeah, we gonna talk, we gonna have fun. Mm. We be on fire, we be lit lit. Ch- uh. Check it, check it, check it. This evening called Sister Boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dad walk on. Man, we, hey, man, we down here in New Orleans, man. Hey, man, we got a real special guest for y'all today, man. This guy right here don't need no introduction. Hey, man, this guy done showed us so much love, man. He brought, hey, he shows us love. Anytime we come to the city, man, we we checking in. You know what I'm saying? You know, the check in thing, people take offense to it, but at the end of the day, when you got real ones, people who you rock with, right. we checking in for the right reason, who gonna give us the key to the city, man, because he's been giving the keys. He's going to let us borrow his keys while we here, man. Anytime, anytime. And shout out to you, your wife, GDP Jamaica. GDP is in the building. Shout out to ECO and Mr. Jamaica, man. I, man, y'all are a blessing, man. Y'all, like I said, I was a fan of y'all. Like I told y'all, it feel good to be back second time around. So second time, man. Glad to extend a hand and all that stuff because y'all do the same thing. And I think it's going to be a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth time, man, because you're just a real one, man. You know what I'm saying? And shout and out Big D, too, not to cut y'all because he put D that together. Big D the mogul, man. Definitely. Mogul media, man. Man, that's the reason. That's the reason for the season, man. Yeah, that's, yeah, I just yeah. talked to him. You see, I called him a while yeah, ago. Know, yep. It's yeah. just a lot of love going on, man. People don't realize that, man. When you really link in with real ones, real, you know, real recognize real, but birds of a feather do flock yeah, together. Yeah. So I believe that. Well, I like Jay, and I'm shout out Sean too, Sean Cash City Chief. Man, and that's my boy. I want to see, like Jay Z said, real recognize real, and you looking for me? I put my hand on my heart because my nigga, I feel you. <laughs> Yeah. Man, but I gotta ask you this, man. Going back, I gotta go into this spiel, man. This uh, definitely is the month uh, Pimp C's birthday, man. Right. So when it come down to Pimp C, man, and being that you know, uh, you know, hey, man, boys kicking back. I think it's December twenty seventh, if I'm not mistaken. I think I want to say. I think I'm right. Thank you, December. Yeah. Look it up for me. See if I'm. If you, bro, it's de- you, it's it, you, nah, close. I it's, you close. Chad, look, it's de- is it either December twenty seventh or December 29th I think that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know it. I know it's. I know it's after Christmas. It definitely Ch- is. Chad Lamont Butler, yeah, because he died on the fourth, which is Jay Z birthday. But Chad Lamont Butler from Port Arthur, Texas, and um, 29th. Yeah. So the reason, like I said, I feel like Pimp's so important because that's why I love the South. Because Pimp stood on that South shit so much, and his pride for the South meant a lot to me. And I just was like, that's why I don't just be like on oh, that. I'm New Orleans and fuck Louisiana, fuck the South. No, I love the South. And I know how big the South fan base is and I know what it meant to Pimp C. And I seen how he helped Master P with that down South hustle because P had the West Coast bad boys and he had the West on lock. But to get that South, he needed a down South hustle song and stuff like that, you know? Same way they kind of helped Cash Money too with Bum B doing stuff on them old big time albums. So I love UGK, I love Pimp C. And everything he stood for. Wow. Man. Yeah, man. Uh, you from Crowley? Crowley, Louisiana. That's 337, baby Cajun country. Yep. Man. From. All the way to Port Arthur, man. All the way to PA. Man, so, you know, just just love him, man. And, and man, I, I, I still I rock with Bum B, man. He got Trill Burgers. He getting ready to open this new spot up. And I think he's in H-Town. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, can't wait to uh, get over there and get me a burger. I've been mad at him because I ain't got to eat me one of them. He got a. A restaurant. Yeah, I seen that. And I, I think I don't know if he's still a professor at Rice University because I know he's. I don't know, but I know he did too. that for a minute. Yeah, but like I said, I just always think about Pimp C. Say, I got a. Uh, um, he said back to Louisiana in a flea wheel. I just served him fiends some shit to put the fiends on the back. Yeah, got the pounds going for folk because you know I just paid. T- and I love how he said, you know, I got a holler at Master P because we got money. Trail, money. Nigga. Man, come on, man, on that murder. <laughs> talking about a murder, you bitch. Then Bum B just like it just. Man, them dude was hard, bro. And like I said, I miss him, and I, I appreciate what he did for the South and for us. So for all the artists that's doing what they're doing now, you got to always remember that people paved the way for you to be where you at right now, you know? So we still standing on their shoes and all the work that they put in for us to be in a position. We could talk about it because a lot of those media places up north, they was talking, telling their story the way they wanted to tell them. They was leaving us out of the conversation. They didn't want, they didn't want to talk about us in the magazines and all that, so... Now we could do it on our own. We could talk about Pimp C and it's cool. Well, they not, I don't want to talk about them country motherfuckers. We could talk about that and love it, them country rap tunes. Man, country rap tunes, man. I, I just, man, I, I ain't going to lie to you. Big fan, uh, pocket full of stones, man. Mm-hmm. Super tight, man. Mm-hmm. Shout out that boy Bobo Luciano, man. Yeah. But at the end of the day, man, you know, we got to celebrate. Yeah, it's a celebration, yeah. man. Hogging yeah. the game, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Hogging the game, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So let's, let's talk about... Uh, let me put you on spot for a minute. Who the hardest? Who the hardest uh, rapper to come out of New Orleans? The hardest the to hardest. me ever. Yeah, but it's uh, your opinion. I mean, I gotta say, I gotta go Wayne because where Wayne took it at. My favorite is Soldier Slim, 
And then Wayne or whatever for wise is like where he took it at the flows like Wayne is on a whole nother level. So you gotta like every head must bow, every tongue must confess. Like Wayne to the world, I feel like people. I love Jay Z. Jay Z and Tupac, my favorite two rappers. But I gotta say Wayne took that shit to a whole nother level. He mastered his style. So for him being from New Orleans, and I feel like one day they gonna in the airport or something after him big or whatever. But I gotta say Wayne, and I know the city loves Soldier Slim. So the king of New Orleans. Forever Soldier Slim because he's so 504. But if I had to say the greatest to ever do it, not just in New Orleans, Louisiana, and just all time in hip hop, man, I'm going to say Wayne because the way he evolved and took the mixtapes and the flows and the influence he had and everything, I'm going to give it to Weezy F Baby, Dwayne Carter. That's hard, man. You know, I man, when you think about that whole era, I always said Wayne, he, he hard when it comes to the music, but baby, baby and Slim hard when it comes to the business. Definitely. And I just felt like People be just, you know, kind of, we would say Lil Wayne, but that would have never been no Lil Wayne without the right infrastructure. You right, know what right. I mean? Of course. The right foundation. And I think Birdman, I think a lot of time don't get the credit he deserved as far as because of the business behind the whole brand. Mm. He, I'm talking about from early on where people say he messing this nigga out of money doing this, but it, it take a hard it take a different type of dude to mm. be able to even stand in that gap when right. it come down to leadership. But this is the thing about that too. Everybody was talking about the shady business of the music executives. Yeah. A lot of those guys been having shady stuff when they, they don't talk about Morris Levy, all the shit he did or whatever. Uh, 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 Leonard Chess, like it was white dudes that was doing shit, but they always talk about the black music executives. But like I said, Birdman and, and Slim was learning that shit on the fly. Nobody didn't teach them. They didn't go to school for this shit. They just was learning from the streets, trial and error. But to say that they did this shit with no college education, them dudes went a long way. And of course, great coaching is just like Phil Jackson or Costa Model with Tyson. Wayne and them had the talent, but you still needed those great executives to be able to give them that direction and understanding. So I feel like that's why it's so important. That's why Birdman went on live and he was saying, man, I'm the best to ever do this shit. Like, who did it better than us? Like, name somebody. He said, yeah, I studied Suge Knight, J. Prince, and um, Puffy, and people like Easy e but I learned what they did and I did it better. And nobody didn't have a longer run. Wow. And that's true. Like, from from even before Cash Money had the deal seven years before that, when they was doing it with Pimp Daddy and UNLV and slew of other artists to the high boys ever to when Drew and them left and Wayne and the big time had to hold it down to Nikki and Drake to right now. So, of course, you got to give it to them. And and I heard Joe Button and them saying, no, we're going to give it to Rockefeller. We're going to give it to Def Jam. First of all, Def Jam was more of a, they operated more like a major because they had Murder, Inc. under them. They had uh, Rough Riders, Rockefeller, and a whole lot of the labels. There was Cash Money was more like a subsidiary label under a major. So they used to for them to do what they did, Rockefeller, and I love Rockefeller, but they didn't have a longer run in them. Cash Money is a whole different monster. And they don't want to give them that credit because they're from the South. So they're gonna always be like, I'm country niggas, we can't get in the way smarter. Y'all don't wanna give us deals, y'all don't wanna give us labels, we made our own. I just I thank God for you. <laughs> Breaking that down like that, nigga. These niggas need to know. Like, we know what y'all trying to do. Right. And we ain't going for it. Right. And to hear you say it, it just compliments the way I talk. Right. You saying exact, don't it? It's the same exact conversation. Now, look, I'm going to say this, too, <laughs> to even Tyler Perry, because he's from here or whatever. He's from uptown with Birdman and from, he went to Cohen, the same uh, school that, uh, like, people like Lil Yai and shit went to from UNIV. Anyway, when you think about Spike Lee, Spike Lee kind of looked down on Tyler Perry. Oh, he making these coon type plays and these country people making them look stupid and all that, making black people look bad. This dude, Tyler Perry, telling his story from the South, from the way he sees it. That's right. You telling your stories with Crooklyn and everything from your story, growing from being from Brooklyn. Now, you went to Mo House. Tyler didn't graduate, but he still learned all this stuff and did it better. You just got a $100 million house built in Douglasville, Georgia. Ooh. He came a long way. He got his own studio. So all this stuff that they thought these dudes was dumb and we don't know nothing, but look what Tyler Perry did. So every time they think that these down south boys, country and stupid and bunkins, we keep showing them we not. But maybe they're going to catch on to it and Tyler Perry understand that most of the black people live in the south. And most of their ancestors came from there and went up there or whatever. That's we right. We still had to deal with it. That's right. And we had to get it out the mud and we had to make a way 
You know, we turn dirt into diamonds. Man, that's hard. Diamonds man. into dirt. No, no, I, I love it, man. You know, and I agree. So yeah, Spike Lee had his run, and that was mm -hmm. cool. But he's supposed to commend that younger brother that's coming behind him mm -hmm. and doing what he's doing anyway, because that's what we do a lot of times. We 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 forget about the, the the fact that God paves the way with that new generation. Right. He did it with Joshua and Moses. Mm -hmm. I'm a believer. So right. at the end of the day, I see how he Moses had his time. Then Joshua came, and you know, and that, and so on and so on. But mm -hmm. the next generation was always stronger. The right. younger generation carries the new vision. Right, right. And we got to respect it. And I, and I think about, I think I, I don't know, I might be saying her name wrong, Zola Hurston or something like that. She was a poet back in the day, and, and Langston Hughes was a poet, but he was more like in Harlem and stuff. But they seen the world different. They used to kind of get into it a lot, but she was telling her story from a Southern woman, and he was telling the story of living more in New York. Same way with W.B. Du Bois. He doing the NAACP in Harlem and Bucket T. Washington down here in Alabama. So the way we deal with the, the white people and the way we had to deal with it in that time, it was different. So he was like, you bowing down to the white man, but he like, I gotta, we looking at it different because we're in two different parts of the world. Oh, so that's how it be with us in the South, even with the music. The way they see it and the way we see it is different. It don't mean it's wrong, it's just we from two different parts of the world and we just do it different. Explain to me, Sharani, this billboard that we learned about last time, we like, or, or this painting mm -hmm. where people would put their album. You was too young. You might have been too young. You talking about Peaches Records? Yeah. I'm, hell yeah. No. No, I remember that shit. So, so tell me, what well, was that about? Well, back in the day, I remember Peaches Records. This was in Gentilly. That's where it was at. Now, you know, she got it. Correct. Um, a magazine. You know, a magazine. Yeah. But back then, it was um, in Gentilly in the Seven Wall around Dillard University. And I guess that was the advertisement. So you could pay for the wall. So you might see a No Limit Soldier Rag album on that with Juvenile. 400 degrees uh, you might have the whole no limit tank painting on the side of the wall that was just good advertisement all the labels wanted to promote their album or their record label logo so you will buy the pizza's wall and that person to paint the wall and everybody get to see your album uh your record label logo on the side of that wall like big boy records uh cash money no limit uh a slew of other labels you know releases uh albums or whatever wow Birdman, she said he had the longest run on there where he had mm -hmm. it on there for a long time like, yeah, yeah because he just wanted to he she said he baby you know like he yeah. he gonna do it big you know yeah that's how he is he gonna lay a stunt down like he really <laughs> lets you know like and i'm gonna say this too because a lot of people always talking about the stunt you know uptown i know from what i my daddy from uptown a lot of my people on my dad some of my mom people too but most of my daddy people from uptown and at one time, stunting was a bad thing. Like, nigga, oh, this old stunting ass nigga, he bragging what he got. Right. That was frowned up on. Birdman made it better because Soldier Slim said shit like, nigga think I'm from uptown and I love stunting. You got me fucked up with my people, though. So Slim was kind of taking a shot at them with that, saying, like, I ain't no stunner. Like, them niggas stunner. Uh, P might say four or five purple Hummer Jags for the summer. My shit sitting on 20, but I ain't no uptown stunner. So Birdman made stunt cool, but everybody uptown wasn't just acting like it was cool to stunt. And that's document. There's a lot of other songs I'd be doing this shit all day. I'm not about to do that, but people from New Orleans know that that wasn't the thing. Birdman made that shit cool to be a stunner, and that's why everybody won't be the number one stunner. So you telling me from uptown, he they known for being stunned. Well, now I would say, I'm not saying, because everybody in the city, I mean, people in Detroit was stunned. Of stunning, course, but I'm just saying, but people would look at them and say. Well, now I would say that's like a way of life. That's like what everybody want to be known for to do. But at, back in the day, that no, wasn't something it, that people wanted to do. But when Birdman did he it. He changed the culture, yeah. But was he, what, that was some that part of the. That was uh, a part of the marketing thing. That's See, what I'm saying. Puffy said, Baby said he looked up to Diddy because Diddy was always stunned with the with the Versace and the driving the cars backwards with him and Biggie. So Puffy, Baby looked up to Puff. That's why he said I looked up to J Prince, Puff, and Suge Knight. But he found his own way. So he like with the champagne and all that, he really put that out there. That flashiness. That's why Detroit people love New Orleans because New Orleans dudes be street, but they stunt. But that's that cash money lifestyle. You look at No Limit, they really wasn't on that stun shit as much. P. Wolf Versace and he put diamonds in his glasses but that wasn't the whole angle cash money was like we gonna do helicopters on the stage we're gonna do donuts <laughs> we're gonna leave the tags on the car we're gonna wear two watches like that was what baby did nobody wasn't doing that shit like that like like big boy and it was going hard too but that that wasn't the image so when he took on that name cash money records he really embodied this stunning flashy shit and that was just baby whole personality even to this day it's all about the lifestyle and about the flash and the shine and all that shit man so when you when you look at the uh the cash, diamonds in his mouth my diamonds baby, you know? in his mouth yeah all that that nigga came with it didn't he yeah took the, the big long out. buses and all that man uh, we 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 I hate to, uh, well, I don't hate to bring this up. Uh, 
Ghana got out of mm-hmm. jail. Right. Uh, people saying he snitched. I don't know how much of a gangster he was to begin with. Right. Um, what do you think when you see the the snitch culture or the people saying this and that? Just the back and forth to sh- from from being locked up to coming back out to right. you seeing it. We just we just bloggers or interviewers. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that kind of? And I'm gonna say this too, because people be feel like just because you blog or you not directly in the street, you don't have no business to talk about it. But people could talk about sports all day. Or news reporters could talk about entertainers. That's their life, they're in journalism. But people that don't really understand, they don't get it. Why people talk about this? You right. So anyway, to piggyback on what you're saying, they are saying that it can't be used against them. But we did see it that he said that he was in a car and that it is a gang. Because I know Thug and him kept saying and his lawyers kept saying that. Uh, YSL is not a gang It's a label A record label You know Young Stone Life But they saying Young Slime Life Or whatever And stuff like that So they saying It is a gang And he did say that He One of the people Asked him on record He said yes it is So I don't know If they could use it But I know It don't look good For people And we still don't know What the DA got And we still don't know What's gonna happen They said the case Might take about a year But that didn't look good Or whatever that didn't look good at all. And looking at the other videos with Gunner talking to Crime Stoppers and this and that. And then, you know, people talking about T.I. told on his dick. It's like a lot of stuff that everybody acting like it's cool. I don't know. People move the goalposts for their own liking or they just change the rules of the game when they want to change them. I don't I don't know. It just it just seemed bad right now. It just seemed like it's a bad time for people in the streets. So yeah. I need to try to figure out something else because. That shit ain't looking good right now. Nah, man. So Juvie Two's just still going down, or what? Hell yeah, Ju- when Baby did the new video with him and Juvenile, that uh, Ali, I'm the greatest since Muhammad Ali. They did that at Juvie Tuesday, so yeah, that's still a big thing. And Juvie like the crawfish ball and stuff like that. And you know, Juvie going, Juvie so five hundred four. Juvie gonna wear Saint jersey, gonna barbecue. I mean, he gonna cook his crawfish and all that, like ball and everything. So yeah, Juvie Tuesday still the thing or whatever. And he man. still gonna put on. Man, did you see the documentary, Soldier Slim? Yeah, I seen, um, I had posted on my page on um, the hit the Hip Hop's Homicide with um, 50 Cent, the guy that do the interviews from Baton Rouge and stuff, yeah. Wow. Okay. How, how did you feel like they, they uh, portrayed the whole situation? I mean, I think it. I think they, they did what a lot of us kind of already knew all the stuff that they was talking about, certain people that was involved in certain stories and allegations. Like, we always had been hearing certain stuff about this person could have been involved or this person went to jail or Soldier Slim was investigated with a murder and... Uh, the city park we I remember reading that in the newspaper back then so a lot of stuff I knew cuz I'm here and I and I heard it or whatever and stuff like that but I guess it was good to see you know all this stuff or whatever cuz they did everybody else stuff and all that but I know a lot of people in New Orleans wasn't going to be saying too much because that's just what it is like this the murder capital of the world uh, of America and it's been like that you know, on and off a lot of times, and there's nothing to glorify that, but it's just that kind of city. You know, women die, dudes die, people pull up fast, and in a small city, so it's easy for somebody to bump into you. Plus, it's an outside city, because everybody be at second lines, and just like I just showed at the end, so just some second line, like, people be at shit like that. So it's easy to run into people or whatever, so people just watch what they say, you know? Yeah, I see it's, uh, it's a few of them not talking on there. Yeah, yeah. Like, like when Booby Black, they asked him, he was like, I, I don't know that. about that, I don't know about that, I don't, man, we, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way they do it in New Orleans. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's like, like we ain't be doing that. Right, right, right. So what? What? What's up with? Uh, so when? when did you like when Yellow uh, Yellow Beezy did the uh, the Yellow Boy song? Yeah, I mean, see, a lot of times people from New Orleans might be like, "Man, why they doing our shit over and all that?" No, I I think that's flattering for them to do that. They inspired by that. Them dudes looked up the Cash Money No Limit, so it's 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 a good thing if somebody was inspired by Michael Jackson or you know Whitney Houston, they might want to try to do their record over because they was inspired by him. So there's nothing wrong with that. People do Wayne shit over, so I think I like when he did that. I, I like when uh Fredo Banks just did the UNLV album. So I think that's a good thing. I just feel like that means people love what we do and people still pulling from it. So, you know, just like they love our food, you know? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Music, everything. So, man, I, I like it, man. So, who the new hot artists down here outside of your artists? All right. Well, like I said, who popping underground right now and I work with her before super bad for the women. She like killing it. She was just on the stage with Lil that's Wayne. Yeah, I need her here. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. She was on. We're going to get her on Boss Talk next time or something or whatever. I don't know if she's probably busy right now, but super bad. She was on stage with Lil Wayne at the um, Louisiana Fest. That's when he sang gold medal, gold medal, because she was dancing on her head. And Lil Wayne went to ad living her and just went to jumping up. And he was like, I think I love you. I think. I. So she really popping. She got the song Meeting in My Bedroom produced by Michael, which is a producer out of Reserve, Louisiana, in St. John Parish. And then you got. 
like I said, who else I might say? Everybody already know Rafael not doing. Man, there's so many, you know, it's a lot of artists and stuff like that, like that's popping. And, 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 and this always be the hardest thing because it's always like, a, it's, it feel like it's 100,000 rappers and everybody feel like, you forgot me. Why you didn't say my name? So I guess that's why people always don't really say too much, especially when they don't got in the game. Because it's, it's been a lot of times I didn't say all these names and they wouldn't even repost it. And they wouldn't even say thank you because I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, but they'll get mad at you. But there's a lot of times I do say people names and stuff like that. That's hard, man. But there's a lot of them I like. Like I said, um, I like Cutter Gang J Black. I like Junior Montana. I like C Finance Reedy. It, it's a lot of them, bro. Um, J. Arson, like Iceberg. Uh, man, I can't. It's, it, it, you, you can go to Black and I got to ask you, though. I got to ask you who the hardest producer ever came out of New Orleans. The hardest producer that ever come out of New Orleans to me? I'ma say Manny Fresh and then I'ma say Kel. Manny and then I'ma say Precise. Pre precise? Precise gonna be third. If I precise was the producer at um, Big Boy. Okay. With Big Chuck. With a rest in peace, Big Chuck. He was the man behind Big Boy Records. That was the label Partners in Crime was on PNC. But I'll say Manny Fresh, then KLC, and then Precise. Wow. New Orleans that's, to that's me. a hard that's a hard top three right there. That's hard, man. So what what, what how can you tell a KL beats? Well, KL used the he the way he used the way he run his drums, like how when you hear like move, bitch, um, get out the way when you hear stuff yeah, like um, my fuck them other niggas, excuse me, like fuck them other niggas because I'm down for money. It's like the way he run his drums. I could tell KLC stuff, and I could just tell fresh stuff too. I like fresh like just bouncing. It's like when he make like I need a hot girl. I could just hit a on the back the ass up. It's just like they got different sounds, and that's what I be trying to tell people. It's still a distinctive sound to New Orleans that we could tell. Is we I was still able to tell like a Big Boy record, uh, a No Limit record, a uh, Cash Money record back in the day when I was younger, and all of it sound New Orleans, but it sound different. It's like different variations of gumbo. It's all our gumbo, but it's the way these different restaurants make the gumbo, but it's still gumbo. And wow. that's what people don't understand. So, who is, uh, when you look at the artists from down here, mm -hmm. um, would, uh, who's known for lyrically, like one of the most lyricist artists? I mean, I'm going to say. You see what I'm saying? I mean, in the female category, I'm going to give it to 3D Not T. Yeah, on a whole nother level with the lyrical shit. Like, see, man, she on a whole nother level. But my favorite lyrical spitter, besides I already said Wayne or whatever, I'm going to say Mac, though. Mac. Mac, Mac no. camouflage assassin. Mac was that nigga. Mac, Mac, Mac McKinley, yeah, 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 McKinley. I yeah. interviewed him last time. Mac is uh, he loved he loved he used to love the, the East Coast feel because yeah. of his lyrical. Cool, you rapping all, and that's who inspired him. And that's the same person that inspired Mr. Marcelo. He was a spitter too, but and I want to say it too, man. Mac Mama got the same name. Mac Mama named Shelly. My mama named Shelly. I think that's his hard. daddy named George. My daddy named Gregor. So. Our parents got the same initials and stuff, but That's crazy. his mama named Sheila, my name Sheila too. But Mac, Mac the truth, bro. I, I, I remember when I first, uh, re, like a song I used to play all the time was with him and BG on Chopper City and stuff like that. And man, he went off on that. So that song on Chopper City with Mac and BG, that was the shit, bro. So, well, BG is supposed to be getting hot soon. But that was a diff. That was a that was a clone or some. That was somebody that they said yeah. was BG on the internet. Man, did you that see was that? that was clickbait, man. That man they did he that. Didn't even look like well, it. Then he didn't even have no. I, I don't know if he had a grill or something. Whatever it was, I knew it was it wasn't BG from his mouth. So I'm like, man, this ain't no damn BG and stuff like that. And <laughs> nah, man, he's still coming home soon. But that definitely wasn't nothing. But that definitely had the internet going crazy and all that stuff like that. You know, everybody then that stuff with Gucci man gonna get BG a million dollars. I don't even think that was true. I think that was some fake little internet shit too. Cause I know damn well Gucci know BG worked way more than a million and BG could get his own thing going. So <laughs> I think that was I don't think that was from really Gucci man official Twitter. I think somebody did that shit. So is is. I see where Birdman went down there to see him and say he's signing him. Gonna sign him when he come up. I think they is gonna definitely do business and stuff like that because I feel like they got everything straight just like him and Juve back in a good place. You know, Wayne and Baby back in a good place. I feel like, you know, a lot of that stuff they kind of getting it right and stuff like that because they know what they mean to the culture and I feel like seeing them all on the same stage again years later all the fans gonna appreciate it because BG and the high boys influence so much in the world, and, and BG and Fl all these dudes saying step and step on because BG, BG said that all on you. Uh, in my city is a struggle. We hustle to live larger. You step or get stepped on. Times is hard. Shit mm, get real. Mm. Heads get bust. Blood spill. Mm. It's about having things. That's why I want a meal. Shout out BG. You a you a hip hop head? Yeah. 
Ever I since lo- you were young, huh? I love it, bro. My daddy, like I told you, my daddy made music, sung songs, and my big brother used to be going get them old UGK records, Spice One, Too Short, uh, A Ball and MJG, and uh, Easy E tapes and all that shit. So I was always listening to that shit. Al Cool J, like you know, I was listening Let's to. Let's talk about him. your brother, man, for a minute. You know, I know he locked up. Yeah. Um. Just uh, what? Will he, is he going to come home? Well, right now, we talking about my brother, Boss B, um, Brandon. Uh, Boss well, right B. now, we just, I mean, the Supreme Court denied this stuff again. Damn. So, uh, they, like I told you, they got the Jim Crow law that, that was around after the Civil War where you needed 10 jurors instead of 12 to convict somebody. And the Supreme Court said it was unconstitutional, but they sent it back to Louisiana to let them decide. And then when they did try to decide, they still, you know, Denied it again, so they still couldn't change their predecessors messed up years ago. So they they not messing with it, and they, I guess it's just like these people sitting in jail, fifteen hundred of them throughout the state of Louisiana, women and men, that didn't get a fair conviction. They never got a fair day in court. But like you was telling Kuta, can you really get justice in Louisiana? I mean, the proof is in the pudding. No, it's been corrupt, it's been dirty, and and then we're in the South. You know, we lock up more people in Louisiana than anywhere on the planet. Like four times probably more than Iran and China and all these places in Louisiana. And we got the highest murder rate. So we locking all these people up, but we still ain't stopping the murders. Wow. We got the highest murder rate and the highest incarceration rate. Man. So that's not changing nothing. So like I said, um, it just, the judicial system fucked up. And me and my brother and my family, we still working on other stuff, trying to get people to get to the DA office to try to reach out or whatever. The Promise of Justice did a great job trying to help all the other people. But it's just like, it's kind of just getting a little harder because they just keep closing all the doors. How do you how do you try to keep a smile on his face and keep him encouraged? One of his favorite things that make a smile, believe it or not, is that when um, Webby made that song with be Poppin' for Pimp, Go on, Poppin' for Pimp, is the song that Webby made for Pimp C. And that's what they always say. Be like, keep it trail, man. So if I say some Pimp C type shit, I'm fucking with Emmett, man. I'm fucking with Emmett. These diamonds, man, you see these diamonds? So saying some Pimp C shit, because when, before he got incarcerated, we used to always like to watch the Boosie DVD in Atlanta and that Pimp C Pimpulation DVD. So that DVD was something that he always liked to watch. And so saying some shit about Pimp C usually keep him in good spirit wow. and just other little shit or whatever, but he loved Pimp C like more than me. Wow. Like, he loved Pimp C like more you love than, him. He, he like that. He love him like you love him. He, that's that's a hell of a way, boy. Yeah, like I'm I'm telling you, yeah. I'm gonna bump it all the way. I had to keep myself off of it this time because I was trying to bump some new stuff to just hear the artists now, I've been interviewing, right? And, but you list pimp all. No, the way. when I when Pimp C died, I I cried honestly. Like but I had a, tears, like and it's crazy tears, to say that man. shit. But I'm just being real. Like I'm not about to get on no interview and fake no shit. Like I, my dad was like, man, you really? I'm like, man, I felt like I really knew him. Like I really did like the way he talked, the shit he talked about, what he stood for, and just. His pride, so I just try to keep that going, and I just hope I always say, man, I ain't gonna be able to meet him, cause you know I, I might meet Bumby, but I just like hope I'm making a proud, standing on this down south shit and putting it in their faces, man. Like he said, I think that's all of us. I think that's all we can do, right? And, and you know, like you know, you 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 know, you really been really 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 rocking with him when you get them calls and they be like, man, what you doing on Pimp Birthday mm-hmm. this year? What you do? Cause they know, right? Like when I started this podcast. It was nigga, it's pimp for me, and that's what we doing in Texas, and not only Texas, Louisiana. I'm that's me. I'm five miles from Louisiana. And bro. I'm gonna say this too. I know he liked the red. It was one of his favorite colors. So that's why I put this red on the day. Oh yeah. And you know he always wore dicky fits. Yeah, you he did. Yeah. That's why you did. It's not a mistake. Oh, you rock I did, with I did it. that for Pimp C. Yeah. That's hard, man. Yeah, that's I did hard. That for Pimp C. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. I didn't even think yeah. about yeah. it. I, I saw, to, I saw you fit, but I was wondering. Yeah. Because some hard. people might think, oh man, they got blood. And, uh, he a blood? No, I'm not. A, I did that for Pimp C. You I know did he that for the pimp, man. I know he liked Dicky Fitz and all that. That's hard. Oh, I said man. a hog in the game, though. Hog in the game, man. Trying to sell the town. Man, I can't. Hey, man, I can't just express enough how his music was so different but it mm-hmm. made a nigga feel him no yeah. matter where you was at that nigga right. would fly with it and yeah K.O. was talking about that you seen the one with K.O. yeah you talking about show. when they made that damn own uh, when they made that own pull a kick door and when they made that yeah, own yeah. damn that, was, that, that went crazy on the internet yeah it was a kick it was a kick door and he made another break him off something yeah, break him off yeah, break him off something cause him and whatchamacallum he was saying the drums and all that so yeah Pimp C really played a big part in that shit and even when Manny Fresh said he made back to that stuff he was inspired by the song off Super Tight and all that 
That's hard, man. With the strings and shit. Hell yeah. Man, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to link up with you? Well, man? they can find me on Twitter at G-E-E-D-Y G -E -E -D -Y underscore P. And if they want to find me on Instagram, because it's my full one, because they keep deleting me. Damn. But I'm on my full one now. It's GDP Speaks All Together. So that's G. -E Why they keep deleting you? I don't know, man. It's, I don't what know. What you be putting on there? I don't really know, because sometimes they might tell you, sometimes they might don't. I don't know if people are flagging it because they're hating or putting the wrong shit, but I'm thinking that people are just hating or whatever. I don't know, but I just I just keep getting up, bro. They knock me down, I just get up and just keep going because they got people that love what I'm doing, so I ain't going to stop whatever, so I'm going to just come back 10 times stronger. Man, well, anything we can do for you, man, you know we here, man, it's for real, for real, man. Thank you, I appreciate what, it. Did we miss anything, GD? Because nah, you know you the governor. Nah, y'all, y'all. The mayor. Nah, y'all. President, baby. Nah, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to just. Just do my thing for my people and just um and make them proud and I hope oh, I do man. be making them proud and thank y'all for coming driving out here you we and your wife. I always come through and I see New Orleans. I'm a new I'm I'm gonna be this this is like second we home. Right? We country cousins and all yeah, that. But I just want to let people know before I go that it, it's cool to be southern, you know, because a lot of times I felt like I said New Orleans we got away from that southernness and I remember Master P having a whole Louisiana boot on his ring. You know, I remember Baby and them just loving that down south shit of a, a soldier slim sound the other down south hustle down here besides Master P and Baby. So I just want people to know it's cool to have southern pride and that's what I like about Memphis and a lot of other places in the south and I got my southern pride because like I said, people like Baby, J Prince, Tony Draper, Ball and G, Outcast, all them dudes and Masterpiece, so I just want you to know, man. Thank you, and thanks for representing for the South, man. Man, I oh love, man, I oh love. Bro, appreciate that. Check it, man. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out. Out. Hey.